Okay. So finishing up sound. <laughs> so as I kind of put these two types of waves on the board on Wednesday, remember this one, this wave was the wavy wave. That's the transverse wave. And then there's the slinky wave. That's the longitudinal wave. And actually longitudinal waves are what's created and actually interacts with our ear for us to hear sounds. So um, like if you clap your hands, everybody clap your hands. If you clap your hands. Well, okay, you can just watch me clap my hands. <laughs> uh, if you clap your hands, um, the matter in your two hands are slamming together, and they're basically making a little shock wave in the air, okay? And that little shock wave, then, is what we hear as a clap, okay? We're used to shock waves like tremors, you know, like a to shock wave, but this is a little shock wave in the air. Okay? But the thing is, and actually this is a homework question for you to turn in on Monday, is that if there were no air, to carry that shock wave, there would be no sound. So it's like if somebody screams in outer space, outer space has no air, can you hear him? No. <laughs> That's the answer to one of your homework questions. Okay, kind of. so, um, so air is the medium. And I think we talked, we used the word medium before when we started this, uh, this on, on waves. We talked about um, a ripple in, ripples in a pond where the water is the medium, okay? Yep. Light doesn't need a medium, but sound does. Okay. So here's a little speaker, of course, um, sending out an assortment of sounds, good sounds, bad sounds, okay? But what we interpret are these kind of little, remember we had the compressions, right? Compressions and rarefactions, rarefactions. So compressions, rarefactions, compressions. So if we were to kind of, oh, it is on there, on the bottom of that, they went ahead and it says compressions are peaks of like air being squished together, okay, and um, rarefactions are valleys, no air. Okay. So I... I drew in this, brought in this little figure of a person's ear. Like when you go to the doctor, sometimes you look at their posters on the wall, you know. <laughs> and of course, sometimes they have a picture of an ear. <laughs> yeah. It is just an ama it makes me want to go in, uh, into audiology. Just amazing to think how that works, our inner ear, taking those air compressions and translating them to sound for us. Okay, so um, sound is a longitudinal wave. Sounds like a good, um, I haven't made the test yet, but doesn't that sound like a good multiple choice question? I think so. Sound is a longitudinal wave. Okay. We haven't talked, we've talked a lot about um, wavelength, okay, and we talked about frequency, but we haven't talked about kind of how big the waves are. How big it is is called its amplitude. Okay, how big it is is its amplitude. And actually, when it comes to sound, amplitude is volume. So if it's really big, okay, okay, it's a really loud sound. If it's just kind of minimal, okay, with regard to its height, okay, no, it's uh, low volume. So uh, how high it is, is, how high is called amplitude. And that's down here. So do you see this amplitude? It's kind of how high your, how high your wave is. Um, amplitude with regard to looking at um, this longitudinal wave is how intense, how much air has been squished together. Our poor airs, right? Okay, so, so amplitude is volume, okay? Now, um, wavelength, when it came to light, when it, we talked about the cousins of light, Wavelength gave us our light, our ultraviolet, our infrared. Wavelength gave us different cousins of energy. Here, with regard to sound, wavelength actually gives us our pitch. Okay, gives us our high or low. Okay, so if it's a high note, that means actually it's going to have shorter wavelengths. Okay, shorter wavelengths, higher frequency. If it's a low pitch, that means it's going to have longer wavelengths. Okay, and and lower frequency. That's kind of cool. The shorter the wavelength, 
the greater the frequency and the higher the pitch. Oops, sorry. So actually, I almost forgot. So I brought, um, I looked up online how to use a tuning fork to like demonstrate some things and I don't know, I came up with some ideas, but so this is uh, the, the pitch D, as in, you know, the letters of notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Okay, good. <laughs> so um, when you hit a tuning fork, and I, I, when I looked at the video online, this dude was all about tuning forks, right? He's a physics teacher, but you can just barely hear it. You kind of have to hear it up to your ears. I mean, it's like, you can, I don't know if you guys can hear it. <laughs> One of the things he said is, if you want to amplify it, you can send it through another medium. So let's see if it works. Okay, so I'm going to give it a tug. Okay, and so it's like vibrating and making that pretty decent. We can do this. Okay. So it's actually going through the board as an amplification. The other thing he did, the last thing I'm going to show you, is he said, um, actually those little vibrations can be seen if you send those vibrations through water. Okay, so I'll do it a few times, but here we go. Is that cool or what? Little vibrations go through the water? <laughs> so I think that's neat. Sound is a powerful thing. All sorts of science fiction things have been written about how sound can be used as a weapon. Um, okay, so tuning forks. Okay, and actually these are, and we've got a few. I didn't, I wasn't real impressed with this demonstration, but these are um, sound boxes. Okay, tuning fork on top of a box, tuning fork on top of a box, and actually, if they're the same note. You can actually make, you hit one and it will make the other one resonate. It will make the other one buzz. Okay, for the same note. It's kind of cool. I, demonstration didn't do it for me. Okay, but some other sounds. Okay, playing the strings on a guitar, you know, vibrating, creating compressions in the air. Um, the annoying person with the whistle. Um, the cool person with the trumpet. Okay. You know, this is an idea, the whole, Operetta, you know, person hitting that note, ah, and the thing breaks, okay. And your book talks about this. I'm not really taking time this semester, but um, when she uh, breaks the glass like that, she has just struck just the right frequency, right, the, just the right wavelength to basically um, resonate in that um, glass, for the glass to break. So... Okay, so I thought this was interesting. Um, so you probably already know this, um, and I have a picture here of dogs. I got this from the internet. Are they not adorable? Big old dogs there. But you can get these dog whistles that when you blow them, you can't hear them, but it's like a regular whistle. Okay, it's just actually, um, I think it would be ultrasonic. Okay, it's ultrasonic. It's like a higher pitch than our ears can perceive. It's kind of like light because you figure ultraviolet light, ultraviolet radiation, we can't see it, but it's clearly there. And these sounds are there. We can't hear them, but they're clearly there. Okay, so it's kind of similar. So the dogs are responding to that. Um, you actually have a homework uh, that... I don't think the homework is too bad. That's going to be due on Monday. But you have a homework where you're going to use this figure. And in your homework, you're basically going to work with those two thresholds of what can we hear. Okay. So 20 kilohertz is, and on a test, I'm not going to make you apply kilo, but 20 kilohertz, of course, is 20000 hertz, right? 
two zero and then three zero more zeros hertzes per second. So I thought that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so here's the good old uh, kind of these three equations are the same equation, just kind of moving things around. So this for sure is, uh, I don't know if you want to put all three on your note card, you could, okay, or just one of them. But we said this for, uh, for light, okay, and it's the same thing for sound waves. Light waves and sound waves have the same, same thing. The velocity that the sound is traveling is equal to the wavelength <coughs> of the sound, and that's the lambda, times the frequency of the sound. So the thing about sound, though, is it's more susceptible to, um, sound is actually temperature sensitive. Sound carries, uh, will carry uh, farther uh, depending upon the temperature. Sound will carry differently depending upon the humidity. That's one of the things we talk about in, in meteorology. I'm so strong. We talk about meteorology, the sound carries differently. Um, so anyway, we still have that relationship with regard to sound. So let's do... Um, oh, yeah, almost. So up here, this is a D, okay? And on there, it says 288. So this is a D, 288. Yeah, not bad. The closest we have is 293. That must be it. Okay, but these are all, are they hertz? Yeah, it's a frequency chart. Let's see if this has got 288 I'll have to look into that, why that is. Yeah, it's got 294, yeah, and 294 here for the D. Well, it also has those different instruments, but it doesn't have the pitch for it. Yeah, that's true. It does not have the, so it the might specific. So vary based on the instrument. Mm hmm That could be. Okay, so now kind of finishing up, let's do a couple problems, okay, and we're going to use that, I'm going to put it at the top of the slide, we're going to use that, um, I think it's easy to remember the velocity of a wave is equal to its wavelength times its frequency, lambda time f. That's what we're going to use for both of these problems. So the first one says, consider a sound with an ultrasonic, so it's like uh, too high of a pitch, we can't hear it, ultrasonic frequency of 32 kilohertz. Now right away, if I give this to you on a test, I'm not going to give you the kilohertz. I'm going to go ahead and unpack it for you. But you probably already know how many, ki how many hertz is 32 kilohertz. 32,000. Yep. So I'm going to put F for frequency is equal to 32,000 hertz. Um, it gives the temperature of the air and it says that uh, the sound is traveling with a speed of 344 meters per second. So I'm going to go ahead and put V because that's the speed is equal to 344 meters per second. Um, then I see the question here, what is the wavelength? So I'm going to go ahead and put question mark lambda, question mark wavelength. So then I'm going to go up here to my formula, and I'm going to, what, divide both sides by frequency. And when I do that, I get wavelength by itself is equal to velocity over frequency. And then I'm going to go down here and use it. So wavelength is equal to velocity over frequency. Velocity is 344 meters per second. And um, frequency is 32,000 um, hertz or per second. And it looks like I'm going to go with two digits. Thirty-two. Okay, and my calculator displays um, zero point zero one zero seven five. Now units. I'm just wanting you to think of what units. What would be good units of wavelength? 
meters. Perfect. Very good. So if I said we're going to go with two digits, I'm going to, what we say, keep the one, okay, and actually I'm going to keep the digit here in the, let's see, tens, hundreds, one thousandths place, but I'm going to round it up because of the seven, okay? So I'm going to report my answer as 0 0.011 meters. Any questions about that one? So let's look at the other one. And it says we have an infrasonic. So there's ultrasonic and infrasonic. So infrasonic is like subsonic. Okay, so it's a, the wavelength is longer than actually we, our little ears can interpret it. Um, so it says, let's see, consider frequency. Um, of 0.078 hertz. So I'm going to put F frequency is equal to 0 0.078 hertz. Okay. Um, it says it's traveling at the same speed, so I'm, my velocity is going to be that 344 meters per second. So V is equal to 344 meters per second. And again, I'm after wavelength. So I can use that same uh, equation at the top there. So I'll put wavelength lambda is equal to question mark. That's what I'm after. So here we go. Wavelength is equal to the speed, which is that 344 meters per second, divided by um, the frequency, which is... 0 0.078 hertz. Okay, and we divide that out. 344 divided by 0 0.078. So my calculator displays a big number. 4410.25 blah blah blah. So what are the units of wavelength again? Meters. Meters, perfect. And I'm just going to go with two digits. So in this case, we start from left to right. I'm going to keep the four. I'm going to keep the first four, and I'm going to keep the second four. And then actually I'm going to lop it off there. But I have to be careful. When I round it, I'm going to have to put 4400 as my answer. Four four zero zero meters. Damn. We used to, that's a lot. Where would my yardstick go? I think I took my meter stick somewhere else. But you know, meter stick's is about a yard. Okay. So it's like four thousand. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Four thousand four hundred meters is the the how long it is for one cycle. Amazing. Okay. Any questions about that? <laughs> okay. Um, so I actually will take a screenshot of this and, a, and, a, and push it up under Twitter. I didn't print this out for you. Um, but I do have a picture to kind of show you what I mean by um, or what they look like. So I have two questions on page 163. They're under the Apply Your Knowledge, number two and number five. I think it's number two that asks something about if you uh, drop a hammer in on the moon or in outer space, will it make a sound? So, And then um, two number problems on page 164. Uh, exercise number 12. And the figure 610 is that one that has the, um, has the audible range, and then it has the uh, supersonic and, um, or excuse me, ultrasonic and uh, subsonic. So I'm going to bring those up right quick and take a look.
Okay, so um, this is three and four. Oops, is that three and four? No, that's not three and four. That's what you guys did. Where did the one I just made go? <coughs> Duh. Okay. That's not it either. Wow. Maybe it didn't save. This is it. Final answer. Goodness gracious. Okay, so um, under, I wanted you to do two and five. Is that what I said, two and five? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, so two is astronaut on the moon drops a hammer. Is there a sound? Five is if you're singing in the shower, why does it sound different? If you're singing in the shower, why does it sound different? Yeah. <laughs> Think of what's in the shower. Um, the next couple of questions, these are ones where you need to use your calculator. Says, what is the wavelength limits of the audible at the range? So, the the at 20 kilohertz, yeah, at 20 kilohertz we go from audible to ultrasonic at 20 kilohertz. So basically, you're supposed to come up with the wavelength at 20 kilohertz. It says use the speed of sound, and the speed of sound you can either use 344 or 343. Um, how fast sound travels in the air meters per second. So you knock out the wavelength. Um, and then it says, uh, what is the, uh, the lower frequency? So you're going to have to take the 20 hertz also. And then for the next one, this is what I mean. It's got two parts to it, just the first question in 14. Basically, it gives you the frequency and the wavelength, and you're supposed to come up with speed or velocity um, of of that wave. And the where it says compare it to the speed of air and sound, I don't need you to do that. Okay. That's the second part. Okay? Awesome. That's all I have.